So today we're going to take a look at one of the most miraculous things I think I've ever seen. Not just in esports, but maybe just sports, all sports. Um, because Zeta Division's improvement, not the fact that they've got to the top four, but their improvement in such a small space of time is literally unbelievable. I, I cannot believe that they have improved this much. To give a bit of context for those of you who might not be as familiar, Zeta Division are a Japanese team, and the Japanese teams in Valorant have never won before this tournament. They have never won a game at any international event, a Japanese team. And uh, many people predicted that, that would be the same, and Zeta Division looked like the weakest team coming into the tournament. And in their first game, they actually played against DRX, the team that we're going to watch today. Uh, they had a rematch, and they beat DRX in this instance. But in their first game, in the group stage of the first game of the tournament, uh, Zeta Division lost 13-3 and 13-2 on two maps against DRX. And a couple days ago, they came back and beat them. It, and their improvement in the space of a week is unlike anything I've ever seen. You know, I can understand that teams can get better if they really work hard for like a couple months and you can see that improvement. But to go from where they were to where they are now in that short space of a time, I literally don't know what's happened. It is a miracle story because it's not like they're in the top four now and they look out of place because they're playing like a top four team right now. And this game was really, really good. And this map of Split in particular was really good. And they have really good ideas. And they play well as a team. And so let's take a look at this uh, uh, this map and see how it goes. And the first thing I have to point out is their team comp. Uh, because they're sticking with the old Astra and Viper. The old meta, if you will. They're sticking with it. And really, they're proving that it can still be pretty good. And you're going to see what I mean right now. And so uh, let's take a look at what they do. And really, it all comes down to mid. Because their mid play and their mid hold on this map is absurd. So what happens is they put the Viper Orb here in mid. You can see that it's right popped right now. And they're going to put that Viper Orb there. Risky to push through, right? And then as soon as that Viper Orb, the fuel is kind of, you know, depleting on it and it's going down, they have this Astra Star here for an Astra, an Astra uh, Smoke as well to put in mid. And so that delays you a bit more. And then when the Astra Smoke fades, they put up the Viper Orb again. And then as soon as the Viper Orb is about to fade for the second time, that's when they put up the Sage Wall. And at this point... You can't do anything. You know, you've just been delayed. And you can see DRX's reaction to it in this round is, I guess we just can't go mid. And that happened quite a few different times to them. Uh, whilst that's going on, I should quickly mention, you can see we've got the sky flash down here. We have an Astro Smoke over here as well. And that is to try and get 10 on the raise into this position because he has a judge. And so he's just going to play that close tight angle with the shotgun and uh, and look to hold it from there. But as we round, run this round forward, I just want you to notice like the DRX reaction that they're just, you know, staring into the smoke they're like oh don't worry this viper all will go down and then we'll make our move but then the astral smoke's gonna come there it goes and then the viper is gonna go down and then as we watch this forward and it keeps going forward you can kind of tell that i think based off the fact that this is a sage and a jet in the mid here that they kind of probably wanted this to be a, a a mid split based on where the spike is and the sky is i would guess they kind of you know were thinking that they might go either way but they have to abandon that plan um, because in goes that sage wall with a minute left and they realize, well, if we're going to get through the sage slows as well, like it's going to be about 25, 30 seconds by the time we actually get towards a site. Uh, and so they feel like they don't really have the time to, to try and fight mid, not knowing what's there. So they group up on a instead. And this is the thing because, uh, Zeta know that they're not in mid, they shot the wall a bit, but then have gone quiet and there's, you know, time is, is ticking down at this point. Zeta now know if we hear contact on either site, it's probably where they're going because they have no mid control. So they're probably stacked up towards a certain site. And uh, that's exactly what's going to happen as we run this forward. Uh, because you can see we've got 10 here with his judge. And as soon as this sky flash comes in from the side of DRX, we'll go back to the map and just quickly watch the rotate. So the sky flash just happened, right? Like it just popped up on 10 screen there for a second. And you can already see the sky is on their way. The Viper's on their way. The Sage is on their way. And the Astra is about to put a star down that's about to just help with the delaying impact as well. Uh, you're about to see. So 10 here actually only gets one and gets traded out. But then we get this Astra suck. And that's just going to buy them even more time. And they have worse guns in this round. You know, you can see they got a Bucky, a Frenzy in here as well. It's not good on the side of uh, on the side of Zeta. But here we go. Now we have this Viper Wall as well uh, from Laz on Viper for Zeta. And that obviously gives them a decay. And this is the kind of thing that allows you to win thrifty rounds is they have less health when they run straight through this and they're having to run through it blind. It's also kind of important here, the RB, the Jet, 
on uh, DRX is the one who died because that means that basically, you know, all of them have to run through this choke point. There is no, you know, dash onto site and creating a different angle or anything like that. They just all have to run through the choke point. And so you can just straight up aim it down and you know exactly where they have to go. And there's so little time left that they, they have to do it and they have to do it now. So uh, it all works in the favor of Zeta. They managed to get the first kill. Mako was still vulnerable there. Andy's running through the Viper wall and they just start running through and the trades start coming in. And then eventually Stax ends up in this 4v1. He gets flashed and Laz is on the flank and they win the round. It was absolutely beautiful from Zeta. Their mid hold in this round and in this game, as we'll see in some other rounds, was absolutely fantastic. And uh, they, they're just playing really, really well. And now let's come to round number six. And what we're gonna see here is again, that Zeta have a plan and they play as a team. And uh, in particular, one particular moment here saves them this round because actually DRX are on a, on a low buy here, but there is a moment where it potentially could have got bad. Uh, but again, the team play that they have is super, super good. So the way that uh, uh, Zeta play this map on defense is they're quite passive on B. You can see straight away that they're much more aggressive on this A side. You can see 10 on Raze is already pushed up and we know about their mid play as well uh, that, you know, they, they want to stop you there. And so that means that, you know, they don't really have the utility to really keep you out of this B site a lot of time. And so they, they play more passive on this B site. And so DRX decided, well, let's go to this B site then. Uh, and that's exactly what they are going to do because uh, they put up uh, their Viper Wall, they send in Sky Flash, they put in the Dash, you know, in they come to this B site and they try and get uh, and they try and get hold of uh, the B site. But you can see that on the side of uh, Zeta, they understand this, you know, they, they're getting ready for it. They're prepared. They've got 10 on this big flank that's going to come in as well. They have someone just watching mid in case there was a little lurk through mid there as well. Uh, but this is the key part. This is the real key part because what's just happened is we've seen a sky flash come through here and Laz is in hell. Okay. And he's been flashed. You just saw it. Uh, but in that time, he's just been able to, you know, he got flashed and he put down his Vipers, uh, a snake bite just there uh, to kind of protect him from a push. But what's really, really good here is what Depp does because Depp was just in this smoke and he was just kind of waiting. You know, they were all just kind of waiting for everyone to get into position. But obviously, you know, all of a sudden everything's changed and he was just standing in that smoke. But as soon as he sees that his teammate gets flashed, he instantly drops down to help his teammate and ends up in this position and with the snake bite and the fact that they're vulnerable and the fact that they don't have great guns in this in this uh, round, he's able to help his teammate. And that is the crucial thing that, you know, they at the start of the tournament, they wouldn't have done that. You know, they would have just had a death. And I mean, look at this utility as well, you know, to deny the plant. And really, at this point, they just they send in the sky dog as well. Just it's all delay so that 10 can do this and come on that big flank that we saw before. And it's just absolutely beautiful, right? You get this raise nade in here as well that perfectly lands and uh, and they win the round. But again, it's just that team play that they just did not have before is, is there in absolute spades. You can see it, just the understanding, the communication. It's all there and it's all perfect. And now let's come to round number eight. And we're going to see some mid aggression. But again, you cannot get through this wall that Zeta put up in mid. There goes the Viper Orb. There goes a Viper Molly because he's, you know, last starts to feel that this might be a bit quicker. Uh, so they put up a Viper Molly, Sage Slow. There it goes, right? And, uh, and yeah, they're just going to say you can't get through. And DRX, they do try again. But again, same thing they put up the wall they put up uh, the snake bite as well uh and and they say to them you're not going to get through and drx realize that they can't really get through and the reason is because the wall has only broken in a couple segments so if you did try and push through this you can just spam through where the wall is open because you know that they have to be there and you can be anywhere close behind the wall as well you can be where they are they could be in mail there's just a lot of things to try and blindly peek into that it's not really worth and you can also get spam through it pretty easily as well uh so it's just it's not, you know, it's not worth the risk really at this point. So again, they quickly decide, well, we're just not going to get through this. So they decide to come to B instead. But you can see that Zeta, they have a good read. They rotate the sky over as well. You know, they have a good read that, you know, oh, it's gone quiet in mid a bit. We see again the Astra and the Viper smokes rotating with each other. Uh, you get the Sky Dog into B. It spots a bunch of people. They know that, okay, it's a B hit. And they have this very important Astra star that you've seen just become a smoke there as well. That's just going to give these players, even though the Astra wall comes up on this B site, uh, that's just going to give these players, like, you know, a little extra bit of protection uh, to kind of, you know, separate them from uh, what the hit is going to actually be. Uh, because what's going to happen is they send in the uh, Sky ult here. Uh, Arby starts to dash in, but actually just gets spammed through the smoke uh, and dies. And now we're going to see that they just have a problem, especially without a jet. 
uh, you know, DRX here, they they really don't have much. And so what happens is Mako has to ult from super deep, like really, really super deep. And it only just gets onto site, like a little slither. And, and that really, it might sound like a good thing, but it's actually a disadvantage because they know if you're planting the spike and they can't see you, uh, that, you know, they know exactly where that's going to be. And so at this point, you know, they're kind of, they kind of realize that it's a B here, as you can see. I mean, look at this. DRX, they have a Viper Spit and an Astral down, and they're having to flash back here to check no one is back there because they have so little control. Uh, you know, that's how well it's going for Zeta in this round. And they're just able to delay. And here you can see also that 10, very aware, you know, that this is the kind of thing that they might have made a mistake on before where, you know, everyone would have been sucked into looking at this. But you can see now they have that discipline to know, you know, if there is a mid lurker to deal with it and have someone there watching it. Those are just the kind of mistakes that they don't make anymore. Uh, and again, I don't know how they've managed to, you know, just play a mistake free game all of a sudden. And 10's able to get that kill. DRX obviously do have to try and plant the spike pretty soon. They they have to walk up in their own Viper's Pit like scared little lambs because they don't know what's there. Stack starts to get spammed. And then we get this. And this happened multiple times in the game where 10 was ulting and there was barely any time left on the clock. And that's a big problem because that means you cannot get this spike down as long as this Razor is going. And so what happens is Zest, he has a nice idea. He tries to wall off, but again, they're more than ready for it. They spam it for him and he kills the spike planter. And then they're just going to mop up with the final couple of kills as well. It was absolutely wonderful. And now let's come to round number 11. And we're going to see something a bit different in this round because we're going to get this Viper's Pit here. We get a Sky Flash early as well, just to tell them that they are there. And uh, obviously on the side of DRX, uh, they decide let's not challenge that. They actually put the Sage Wall up early uh, and they have the Viper uh, Wall here on mid as well instead of the orb because obviously they needed to do the Viper's Pit. So no one shoots, uh, no one shoots the uh, wall for a second. So we can run this forward a bit as uh, DRX begin to rotate across to the other side of the map but what we're gonna see again here is just amazing utility usage because as they uh, start to come in to mid here for on the side of DRX uh, what we're gonna see in, in just a second is absolutely absurd it's great observing as well uh, but the sage wall goes down the time has elapsed but then uh, you've got 10 here he was jumping and gets shot at and look at this we're gonna get this suck into slow into nade combo and what that happens, what that does is RB tries to dash into heaven, expecting that the rest of his team will also be alongside him, but they obviously aren't because there's no way they can get through that. And so they get the first kill for free. It's absolutely absurd how their utility usage went from, you know, being very shaky beforehand to being that good right now. Like you saw, it was all coming at the exact same time. I have no idea how they got this good this quick, uh, but then what happens? They actually wall off vents DRX, and so that's gonna that gonna is is gonna allow them, you know, to push towards heaven here. But again, just just their knowledge, you know, that again, as soon as you're walled off, and it's like, oh, we are in trouble a bit. Uh, they pop the the sky ult. The sky ult comes straight out, and we're gonna see a dog here as well, which is going to slow them down even more. So yeah, uh, as they do start to make their way towards heaven, what you get is the sky dog, and uh, that stuns someone. You get the sky ult here, you know, pushing against them, and Depp just swings out with it, and he's able to get one. He does get traded out, but then again, we get this great flash. And whilst the sky was flashed, it worked for the raise, and so Ten's able to get one again, playing off each other's utility. Sugar Zero is more than aware that Buzz has been lurking on this B site a lot, and so he. He's able to get another one and then we end up in Mako with a 1v3 with only 20 seconds left. And again, this is the kind of discipline that they weren't showing before where Crow just retreats. He knows that, the, I mean, look at the time, you know, Mako has no time to actually make this play. And so he just retreats. He makes sure that this round is unlosable. Uh, and as he drops down and he fakes the spike, Crow's going to swing him and get that final kill as well. It was absurdly good uh, from Zeta. And as I said, I just, I have no idea how they got this good. And finally, let's come to round number 17. And so we're on the uh, attacking side now for Zeta and they're going to have a really cool plan. Uh, well, not plan, but an idea uh, for this round. They're actually going to try and go fast, which is not something that they normally do at all. And I think uh, it did catch... Uh, uh, it did catch DRX a bit off guard, and uh, they got a bit unlucky actually that the Sage Wall is here, but it gets broken super quick. We get the Sky Dog, we get uh, the the Sky Ult coming as well, and Ten's just able to get one. Now, unfortunately for him, Stax is more than aware of, uh, that that could be the case, and Stax at this point was basically on a one man mission to try and save DRX, um, and it doesn't go well for them. And then as uh, we run this forward a bit faster, what we're going to see is that they end up in this spot where they kind of get a bit stuck. You know, they got slowed down, they lost that first kill, and uh, then uh, eventually. 
eventually RB is going to be able to get the next kill as well. And so they end up in this 4v3 and it doesn't look good for them at all. But uh, because they don't have much map control, you know, there's not much uh, really for them uh, to do, uh, as you can see here. But what we're going to get is this sky flash here, which is going to, again, pop and, and tell them that someone is there. And Laz is going to put down this Viper's Pit. And at first I was like, what on earth is this Viper's Pit? Why did they do this? You know, what is the point of it? Uh, because when you look at this Viper's Pit, my initial thought was if they wanted to go to A, well then, you know, the, the sky can just hold to make sure no one's coming here. RB can just hold to make sure no one comes through here. And you can hear anyone drop from here. So A isn't really under threat because they can hear any drop. You know, they can, they've got eyes on this and they've got eyes on that is what is what they'll do. And, uh, and they'll be fine. But then I realized that the reason this Viper's Pit is so good is because it creates a huge problem for Mako in mid. He has nowhere to go, literally nowhere to go. Because when you think about where he can be pushed from because of this Viper's Pit, and remember, they know that obviously the Viper is there, they don't know if there's three people there or if it's just the Viper or you know two people there. They, they have no idea where these other players are. And that's gonna cause them a problem because here's the thing, they could come round here to Mako, right? They could be where they are and back here to Mako. They could come through spawn as well. All that in mind, you can see where these arrows are pointing, that there is no position on the map that he now has available to him that he can comfortably sit in and hold an angle and he has a judge as well and be safe and know that he is safe from you know behind. There is nowhere he can go. There is no angle he can watch because of this Viper's Pit, because it gives them the opportunities to maybe go spawn, uh, you know, to, to push through vents because, you know, the side of DRX, they can't really afford to take the risk to try and just re-clear this blind. And that is a massive, massive problem for them. So it wasn't that these A players are under threat, it's that Mako is under massive threat because of this Viper's Pit. And as you can see, the two players are actually coming back towards mid. And so, as I mentioned, it creates a big problem for Mako. And he actually guesses right. He basically just has to guess where they might be. And he guesses right. He sees them. The problem is he has a judge and he wasn't quite expecting the second person there. And he dies. And now the problem is that they think that they're going B. And so they put up this sage wall as well. Uh, the Astro might have heard that. I would guess they probably did. Uh, and that, you know, is just another indication hey I saw one go heaven and the other one's just in mid they're probably going B and so in this instance Stax is gonna make a weird decision or I'm sure it looks weird to some people but I bet he thought that this Viper's pit is about to go down and the Viper is really there you know that this Viper has put down this pit and just actually just ran through here and really they're going for this B split where they're coming from heaven and and uh and the spawn uh, which is a super weird way to do this and so I think that that's what Stax thinks and that's why he does this because he walks through the viper's pit blindly and dies but then because they get that kill on stacks and they think mm, okay that's one a player down maybe we could have a down they decide to go back to a instead they start pinging you know danger spots that you know hey be careful in case they are here uh, but then look at the timing that as soon as they drop an rb you know it's kind of all on rb they flash out to just make sure there's no one close on the ledge here as well uh, but laz he knows he knows that you know the way they lose this round is if someone's here watching this cross and gets the kill and gets two of them maybe uh, so he knows to push the back of his Viper Spit and come round and he finds uh, RB and is able to get that kill and then and then they win the game based off the back of this perfectly timed last you know I mean that shot is a bit stupid because he just finds a, a random headshot but uh, they win the game and uh, it was as I mentioned Zeta I have no idea how they improved that much this quick uh, it seems like that shouldn't quite be possible but they've done it and uh, this isn't some miracle run in the sense that, you know, they aren't good enough to actually be here and they don't deserve to be here. It's a miracle run in terms of how good they have become so quickly. And uh, I cannot wait to see because playing like this, if they play like they did on Split, uh, they have a genuine chance against anyone.